the readings uh, for our Mass today sound like they belong more in Advent uh, than in summer, uh, but this is not Christmas in July. This is the solemnity of the birth of John the Baptist. So we begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Of course, we open ourselves to his Spirit present in this place. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. You heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. This is a solemnity, so we should say, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who raised up St. John the Baptist to make ready a nation fit for Christ the Lord, give your people, we pray, the grace of spiritual joys and direct the hearts of all the faithful into the way of salvation and peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Hear me, O coastlands. Listen, O distant peoples. The Lord called me from birth, from my mother's womb, he gave me my name. He made of me a sharp-edged sword and concealed me in the shadow of his arm. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me. You are my servant, he said to me, Israel, through whom I show my glory. Though I thought I had toiled in vain and for nothing, uselessly spent my strength, yet my reward is with the Lord. My recompense is with my God. For now the Lord has spoken, who formed me as his servant from the womb, that Jacob may be brought back to him and Israel gathered to him. And I am made glorious in the sight of the Lord, and my God is now my strength. It is too little, he says, for you to be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the survivors of Israel. I will make you a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. I praise you, for I am wonderfully made. O Lord, you have probed me, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I stand. You understand my thoughts from afar. My journeys and my rest you scrutinize. With all my ways you are familiar. I praise you, for I am wonderfully made. Truly, you have formed my inmost being. You knit me in my mother's womb. I give you thanks that I am fearfully, wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. I praise you, for I am wonderfully made. 
My soul also you knew full well, nor was my frame unknown to you when I was made in secret, when I was fashioned in the depths of the earth. I praise you, for I am wonderfully made. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Paul said, God raised up David as a king. Of him God testified. I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a Savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. My brothers, sons of the family of Abraham, and those others among you who are God-fearing, to us this word of salvation has been sent. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. You, child, will be called prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. It's a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the time arrived for Elizabeth to have her child, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy toward her, and they rejoiced with her. When they came on the eighth day to circumcise the child, they were going to call him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said in reply, No, he will be called John. But they answered her, There is no one among your relatives who has this name. So they made signs asking his father what he wished him to be called. He asked for a tablet and wrote, John is his name. And all were amazed. Immediately his mouth was opened, his tongue freed, and he spoke, blessing God. Then fear came over all their neighbors, and all these matters were discussed throughout the hill country of Judea. All who heard these things took them to heart, saying, what then will this child be? For surely the hand of the Lord was with him. The child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the desert until the day of his manifestation to Israel. The Gospel of the Lord. This uh, feast has been on the liturgical calendar uh, in Rome and in Constantinople since at least the fourth century. Uh, Saint Augustine was the first to uh, recognize the, that the, the placing of the feast is perfect. Uh, it's not just uh, six months uh, before December 25th, before Christmas, uh, it fulfills uh, you know, what John the Baptist uh, says, what, what uh, is said in the third chapter of the Gospel of John, where when people are questioning whether John the Baptist is the long-awaited Messiah, he says, he must increase while I must decrease. And the summer solstice just took place uh, within a day or two. From now on, the days get shorter. Uh, the winter solstice, on the other hand, right around Christmas time, within a day or two, the days get longer. And so even the, the turning of the liturgical calendar finds an echo in the, the turning of the cosmos, you might say. 
so even, even the sun and the stars uh, uh, match the, the prophecies. John the Baptist is seen as the, the last and the greatest of the prophets because he did really what every Christian uh, should do. He pointed to Christ. He wasn't in competition. Uh, you know, after a while, uh, Jesus was starting to attract bigger crowds than John the Baptist, who had big crowds at first. But John never expressed uh, any kind of jealousy about that. In fact, he seems to have realized that his life, uh, his mission, has been fulfilled. Uh, you and I, uh, even though we're so many years removed from these events, we're still uh, touched by them. Uh, that God's action in the life of uh, Zechariah and Elizabeth was literal. God intervenes in human history, sets things up so that uh, salvation history can be fulfilled. This is the God that also has arranged that people like us have minds and hearts that are open to the experience of encountering God, to be transformed by it. Uh, these are all of the things in a way that are kind of wrapped in this feast and celebration of the birth of John the Baptist. The prophecies are fulfilled. Now you and I are included in the story of salvation. It is good news. I invite you to stand with me then as we are aware of our need for God's help and grace uh, every day to live the radical life of a disciple. So we do, again, think of our family and friends, members of the parish here, most especially those who are in need of our prayers, who are in any kind of trouble today. We pray to the Lord. In these days of violence and unrest in our world, we pray for peace, especially uh, a cessation of the violence in Ukraine and in Israel. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Loving God, you do call us, include us in the story of salvation. We ask for your grace every day, and we ask all of our prayers through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to Almighty God. We place these offerings on your altar, O Lord, to celebrate the, with fitting honor the nativity of him who both foretold the coming of the world's Savior and pointed him out when he came, he who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In his precursor, St. John the Baptist, we praise your great glory, for you consecrated him with a singular honor among those born of women. His birth brought great rejoicing. Even in the womb, he leapt for joy at the coming of human salvation. He alone of all the prophets pointed out the Lamb of Redemption. And to make holy the flowing of waters, he baptized the very author of baptism and was privileged to bear him supreme witness by the shedding of his blood. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them. They may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who've died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another then some sign of God's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. I should have mentioned earlier this Mass is uh, remembering uh, Emmett Dennehy today. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
and let us pray. Having feasted at the banquet of the heavenly Lamb, we pray, O Lord, that finding joy in the nativity of St. John the Baptist, your church may know as the author of her rebirth, the Christ whose coming John foretold, he who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you today, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.